Welcome back to Lit Sports Online. We are here. I got Jared on the table with me this week instead of Justin. Happy birthday. Justin's dad. <laughs> there you go. Mr. Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know his name. I was going to yeah. say Papa Justin, but good enough. Papa Justin. This is the UFC 243 Robert Whitaker versus Israel Adesanya preview video. Hyped. Uh, it's a middleweight title unification bout. Mm hmm. Big deal. In Australia, we got the Kiwi Adesanya versus the adopted Australian Robert Whitaker. It's going to be fun, but uh, we'll get to that fight a little later. Got a couple more to talk about yeah, first. Let's talk about him. Holly Holm versus Raquel Pennington. Canceled. Yeah. I was, wow. <laughs> I was pretty pumped for this fight. It's it's. I love Holly Holm mm -hmm. in general, and I like Raquel Pennington. And the, his two strikers, it was going to be a real fun match, but it got canceled because Holly Holm got injured. Unfortunately. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that to be rescheduled. Yeah. Holly Holm is always great. And you never know which division she's going to come back in. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it could be a title shot. could be whatever. Next up we got Ty Tuivasa versus Sergey Spitback. Yeah, so we have a relatively newcomer mm -hmm. to the UFC in Spivak. I think he's only had one fight in the UFC so far. And I think he lost, but it was to Walt Harris, who is about to fight Alistair Overeem mm -hmm. in uh, in DC in December. Actually, want to go? I don't try to go. <laughs> I can afford it. I'm it's right down the road, dude. <laughs> it's awesome. Especially it's uh, is, is it like Alistair one? Overeem and Carlos Condit at Capital One Arena. Anyway, so Spivak just lost to Walt Harris. Not a big, you know, it's not a big deal to lose to a guy like Walt Harris. But for mm -hmm. your first fight in the UFC, not a great look. If he loses this one, he's probably gone. But Tuivasa might be in the same spot. He's on a two-fight losing streak right now. And he came into the UFC with a ton of hype because he's a guy he can talk. He's funny. He's just got a big personality. He's a bigger dude. So people love to see those guys that look like they're out of shape just beat the hell out of yeah. each other. Especially when it's a guy like Roy Nelson or Tuivasa who just ha packs a giant punch, you know? People don't really care that much. If you're out of shape, if you're going to go out there and knock people out, just ask Andy Ruiz, you know? Yeah. Current boxing three out of four ma major titles just beat Anthony Joshua. Insane. So, you know, it's for me, this fight is loser goes packing, you know? Uh, like so I said. do or die. Yeah, for both guys. I think so. Um, Tuivasa's last two losses are to Blagoy Ivanov and J uh, Gina Dos Santos before that. And Dos Santos is one of those guys who's just always at the top of the division. So, he's a former, former title holder, so it's not a big deal to lose to Junior Dos Santos. Blagoy Ivanov is one of those guys who's middle of the pack. He's kind of been on the up in the past couple mm -hmm. years, but you know, it doesn't look great if you're a guy like Tui Vasa who comes in and ha had a lot of hype behind him and a lot of like fan momentum behind him just because he, he is such a cool guy. He does, you know, he's like 24 or 25. Oh, dude, dude like walks out of the octagon and does a shoey. You know what a shoey is? No, what? These crazy Aussies. Is he a Kiwi? I can't remember. I think he's an Aussie. So they, they pour beer mm -hmm. into a shoe, preferably someone else's, and then have that person and whoever else hock a loogie into it and they chug the beer out of the shoe. What in the Outback Steakhouse is going on? Dude, I don't know. These people what? Tui Vasa walked out of the octagon. What? Tui Vasa walked out of the octagon and did a shoey out of a fan's shoe. And dude, that, I dude, need him to win just so I can see that. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's, that's just hilarious. It's badass. And that's just... I just like Tui Vasa a lot, yeah. man. He's fun to watch. He's got a fun fighting style. And he's a great personality, man. He's... Yeah. I, I kind of hope he wins. I don't. I don't know much about Spivak. I didn't see his first yeah. fight, but or his first fight in the UFC anyway. But uh, I mean, I don't want to root against somebody I don't know. I yeah. just like Tui Vasa so yeah, much. Yeah. So hopefully he gets back on track. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, dude, chugging beers up. Wow, that. Wow. It's <laughs> pretty gnarly. He tried to get like Rogan to do it in his first fight interview <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Rogan's like, no, I'm dude, I want to wear shoes for the rest of the night. What are we doing? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking wild. So, <laughs> next up, we have Al Iaquinta versus Dan Hooker. Yes, the co-main event. Co-main so, event. Another Kiwi. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Dan Hooker, who actually trains with Israel Adesanya, who's in the main event. They're the kind of two 
leaders, if you will, in their gym. And so them both having a fight on the same card in Australia, so close to home, is just great for both of them. You know, it's a good way to have your gym go. Mm -hmm. When two of your biggest guys have to peak at the same time, their training hours are going to be similar. They're friends already anyway. It's good for morale. They also have a third fighter from that gym. I think it's a city kickboxing in Auckland. They, they have three fighters on this card. Um, so, I mean, that is always going to be a plus, especially when one of your main training partners is Israel Adesanya, one of the most dynamic strikers in the game right mm -hmm. now. And, yeah. No, Dan, Dan Hooker is, is a super tough guy. He's a great kickboxer, great striking. His ground game's good. He's You know, he has submissions. Mm -hmm. He has some takedown defense. We haven't really seen him get dominated in wrestling but we haven't you know he hasn't fought a ton of wrestlers he fought you know Edson Barboza and stuff and then he fought James Vick and so his matchups have been relatively favorable but we see people we see the UFC do that for guys to try to build them up a little bit you give them a, a favorable matchup to get them you know in the door in the good graces of the fans and let them develop a little bit more against a higher you know a higher caliber of fighter than they're normally seeing and by the time they get to the top where they can't really avoid those bad stylistic matchups, hopefully they've had enough time to mm -hmm. kind of get it in gear and, you know, close those gaps for a lot of strikers in the, in the, the, the wrestling realm. But Den Hooker's not got a bad ground game, so it's not a big deal. But he is yeah. going up against a Matt Sarah black belt in Rage and Ally Quinta. And I personally love Iaquinta. I mean, I love that whole camp. I love the Serra Longo, mm -hmm. like, realm. You know, you, you got Chris Weidman, Aljamain Sterling, <laughs> Rage and Al. I mean, Matt Serra himself, the one who shocked the world and knocked out GSP. And then Chris Weidman goes out there and knocks out Anderson Silva, the, two of the biggest upsets of all time. Yeah. I don't know what it is. There's just some sort of magic in that camp, and it's great. Wow. And those dudes are just hilarious. And Iaquinta is no exception. He is just another dude from Long Island, man. He's just got that, like, East Coast badass, like, attitude. He just wants to fight. Yeah, yeah. Just like, he doesn't give a shit. He said, you know, he's fight, He's number six in the world right now. He's fighting Dan Hooker, who's number 15. So it's not really, like, a he great... He needs to, yeah. It's not a great strategic matchup for him, right? It's not going to do that much to bolster It'll him in the division. It'll hurt him more than he had the game. Exactly. But... As he says in the like interview in the, the Countdown to UFC show, he's just like, I don't know, I heard somebody called me out for a fight in Australia, so who am I to refuse? He's, somebody said my name and said Australia, and I'm there. I don't care. <laughs> like, damn, that dude is awesome. Yeah, that that's pretty savage. Yeah. Like, oh, all right, I guess I'm fighting in Australia. <laughs> he, he's, he's a gem. He's, he's amazing. But it's, it's an interesting... Style matchup mm -hmm. because I, I think Iaquinta has a better ground game. Uh, I think he has probably a little more power in his hands mm -hmm. than Dan Hooker, but Dan Hooker has a style that Iaquinta has struggled with. Yeah. So his last fight out, we saw him against Cowboy, right? Donald Cerrone, who not exactly the same style as Dan Hooker, but he does fight longer. He mm -hmm. keeps people at the end of his punches, throws a lot of kicks, a lot of combinations, and Dan Hooker is kind of the same. He's a great kickboxer. He fights longer. So if Iaquinta isn't able to kind of get in to in on the, you know, in on Dan Hooker to make it a dirty boxing fight and kind of get mm -hmm. to the point where he can land those big shots on the inside of Dan Hooker's reach, then he's going to have some trouble on the feet. Iaquinta can throw some kicks for sure, but his striking game isn't as long or as varied as Dan Hooker's. So if if Dan Hooker is able to control the distance of the fight and able to set up, like you know, establish his timing and his rhythm, then I think it it, it could be a trouble, a troublesome spot for Iaquinta to be. That's gonna be an interesting fight. I'm actually stoked to see it. Yeah, and I'm real interested to see first off to see if Iaquinta can close the, close mm -hmm. the distance and, and get off some strikes. He has heavy hands. He's got some knockouts on his record. I'm also interested to see what happens once they get into the clinch and the takedown game. Dan Hooker has a great clinch game because he's a kickboxer. Yeah. But I think that if Iaquinta can get it to the ground, especially on top, I think Iaquinta can 
can punish Dan Hooker down there. I think it would be interesting to see if Hooker can throw up a little bit of offense from his back or if I went to, you know, lands heavy shots or starts threatening him with submissions. His ground game's amazing. He's, you know, out of the Sarah camp, Matt mm-hmm. Sarah camp, so you know he's not a slouch there. And and the same, you know, if if Dan Hooker gets a takedown, I'd be real interested to see what happens. But I like I said, I has got a great ground game and those guys that you know, Matt Sarah does not train people to be scared to fight off their back. So who knows? It's a real interesting matchup for me. Definitely. And it has some real influence on what the division is gonna be afterwards. Yeah, and it sets up again the main event I was looking forward to. Um Robert the Reaper Whitaker versus Israel, the last style bender, Adesanya. Yes. Stoked to see this. Whitaker currently the undisputed champ. Adesanya won the interim title against Gaslam six months ago. So mm-hmm. unifying the title, the middleweight title, dude. <laughs> it's a crazy fight. Like when you told me this fight was happening this week, I was like, oh shit, let's do it. <laughs> it's dude, it is a oh, it's God. a really good fight. It is. I think it's the two best strikers in the division. Mm-hmm. I think they're they're totally different styles. Yeah. Also, I do have to say, Robert Whitaker, his like his picked name is mm-hmm. the Reaper, but he he has been dubbed by some of the announcers, mainly John Anik, that his they say his real nickname should be Bobby Knuckles. What? Which is just awesome. <laughs> That's dope. Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker is. That's, That's just a great crazy. name. But yeah, I. I this matchup is very, very intriguing for a few reasons. It's Robert Whitaker's the best striker that Adesanya has faced, mm-hmm. and vice versa. Objectively, Adesanya's a better striker. So it's going to be really interesting to see if Robert Whitaker is able to still find some, some success mm-hmm. because he fights inside of a range that Adesanya is very effective. Robert Whitaker will throw a lot of kicks. He'll throw a lot of push kicks, a lot of high kicks, and he'll keep people at range, but when he gets to the point of landing big punches, Mm -hmm. he tends to close the distance really quickly. So he likes to stay, he likes to start at the distance that Adesanya is very, very effective. Right? He'll throw, but Whitaker is really quick. He has weird movement, and he throws things that people don't typically throw in succession, right? So he'll throw like a push kick to the body, but since Whitaker does this thing where he doesn't fully rotate his hips Mm -hmm. when he throws big kicks and punches, so he's able to recoil and reset really quickly. So, like, we saw him finish, I want to say Brad Tavares, I think, with a weird little combination where he threw like a push kick with his back foot and then immediately reset and then threw a leaping left. And it's not something you typically see people yeah. throw in that in that succession, right? Because when you throw a push kick, you have to reset completely, mm-hmm. right? You have to go all the way back and then you typically don't reset quick enough to then throw like yeah. a leaping left hook. But he throws this weird quick little like push just tap you real hard in the stomach. It's like a snap kick resets and then leaps in with a left hook before you even really catch Jeez. what's going on. And that's so he does good. all sorts of stuff like that. He has kind of like a that's one of his favorite entries to a punching combination is that left hook. He kind of ducks into a left hook and leaps in and then he'll throw a long right hand after it and he'll throw big combinations and long combinations of things. And he likes to end people or end combinations with with head kicks. He tends to he kind of likes to rush people. He leaps he catches people off guard by leaping in at a weird moment lands some punches, gets people backing up, and he gets them backing up against the fence. And most people, if they're fighting, you know, like to like to try to back out to their left side so that they can keep their right side, their power side, mm-hmm. on that back foot so they can throw that shot, that 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 that, uh, that counter shot. Robert Whitaker likes to get people backing up against the fence and going out that direction and then throw a high kick right after it. So he catches people on the head. He walks people into a kick. Damn. It's a good setup, and he's yeah. done it. He's done it to a ton of people too, and it's super. It's he's super fast, and that's the only reason he pulls it off. But it's super impressive because he has he has the power in his fist, he has the power in his kick, he's a finisher. He's one of the only dudes on the planet capable of standing with Yoel Romero for fifty mm-hmm. minutes in two back to back fights. Yoel Romero is a freak, and the fact that he landed everything he had on Robert Whitaker, and Robert Whitaker did not go down is. Insane, and those fights are crazy if you have not watched them. 
Yeah. And the second, he did it with, with an injured leg. He tore like his ACL in one of the fights. Now, I do have to ask this, you know. Now, you know who I'm going for. I decided. But I got to ask you, non-biased, expert opinion, who's going to win this? Who do you think is going to win this? It's a so tough the, match. The, the, yeah, this it's a tough stuff. fight. Yeah. So Wh Whitaker, like I said, he has a weird striking style, mm -hmm. so he might still be able to be effective against the conventionally better striker. So Adesanya mm -hmm. fights real long. He gets compared to Anderson Silva. Yeah, exactly. Just because he fights long, he's very precise, his timing's very good, and he has a real varied striking game. Even though it is much different from Anderson Silva's. Oh, right? yeah, of course. But Adesanya is just so good. His he his, his he cuts angles so so well, so quickly. His head movement is great. He's uh, one of the other factors, particularly mm -hmm. with Adesanya, is his timing is so good, and that is partly due to the fact that he's so active. He's fought in 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 the time that Robert Whitaker has had his last two fights. Adesanya has had six. Jeez. Adesanya has been in the UFC for twenty months. Wow, and is already in an undisputed title fight. He was in the UFC for 14 months, mm. just over a year in a title fight with Kelvin Gastelum. That's insane. His striking game is so good. His his shots are long, his his feints are incredible, his timing is real strange, and it just completely catches people off guard. And he's able to land strikes that a lot of people can't land. He's able to land, you know, question mark kicks in a combination. To me, the big question is Robert Whitaker's grappling so he's not typically known as a grappler mm -hmm. but in his off time what Robert Whitaker did while recovering from an injury was started training wrestling and he got so good at wrestling in his off season that he just entered and won like the highest level wrestling tournament that he could find on wow. the continent of Oceania like in yeah. Australia yeah. just won and then qualified to go on to another tournament that is just, like, everyone that's not the Americas. What? And he qualified for the international team and then stopped and then couldn't participate because he had a fight. So this dude in his free time just, just went wrestles. out and became the best wrestler in that hemisphere. Jesus. Or one of them. You know what I mean? Wow. Save probably some Russians. Yeah, Russians are nuts. But Russians are nuts. one of the yeah, and like that was in his free time. So Robert Whitaker, his grappling is amazing. Yeah. And we saw that on display when he with his you know grappling defense against Yoel Romero, who's an Olympic level wrestler yeah. from Cuba. And so the question for me is, is Whitaker able to find a little bit of success on the feet enough to get into the point where he can have a, a grappling exchange? Mm -hmm. Is his wrestling good enough to take Adesanya down? Who knows? We haven't seen people. Try to take out Sonya down for a little while. Exactly. Um, we saw one guy try to take him down twenty times. I think he defended thirteen or fourteen out of twenty takedown offenses. Wow. Or takedown attempts, which is pretty crazy. So Adesanya has great takedown defense, but we haven't seen Robert Whitaker use his wrestling offensively yet. Yeah. And he has a good game for it. He has a karate style where he blitzes in and out. He covers distance really quickly and is able to. I think that if he was able to kind of effectively change levels, which with his striking style would make sense because he does kind of duck into shots and he has a, lot, a good amount of head movement and cuts angles. So if instead of ducking into a left hook, you know, he fakes that hook and goes in for a takedown, mm -hmm. it could catch Adesanya off guard. That being said, he has to get to that point first. Yeah. Adesanya, you don't, wanna, you don't want any part of him on the outside. Yeah. He's too long. He's too fast. His, that reach. His, his striking game is too varied. He has too many tools. He has elbows, kicks, punches, anything you can think of. Adesanya has got it. Dude has a, an insane kickboxing record. That being said, he doesn't have a lot of knockout power, right? He's got, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, some crazy thing, like 70 kickboxing wins, but only 13 are knockouts. Wow. 90 kickboxing wins and 13 are knockouts. So he doesn't have, like crazy power he's gonna knock you out with that well-timed shot yeah but Robert Whitaker is not going down dude that dude took everything Yo Romero had and just stayed in the fight so to me Adesanya has to either be crazy effective pepper Whitaker and just break him mm -hmm. physically because he's not breaking mentally no or he has to win the decision and winning a decision against Robert Whitaker who 
has a, cra a really great fight IQ and is able to make adjustments when he needs to. Dude had a broken hand and a broken leg, leg against Yael Romero. So what did he do? He started throwing uh, a low like a low push kick to the knee so that he could step into range and then started battering Romero with elbows instead of fists. Dude just doesn't, he doesn't care. He's going to find a way to keep going. That's insane. So you're not breaking Robert Whitaker. The question is, are you going to be able to keep him out of your face enough to outpoint him? If anyone is capable of doing it, it's it Adesanya. is Adesanya, man. That dude, his, like I said, it, it's, it's hard to catch him. It's hard to find him with your hands. That Kelvin Gastelum was able to do it, but then we saw what happened later on in the fight. Adesanya figured him out and just dominated as the fight went on. So it's a question of, is Robert Whitaker able to use his, his busy pace? He, he, he's constantly striking. You're never going to see extended periods of time where Robert Whitaker isn't throwing something, and it throws people off. Mm -hmm. When they don't have a second to think or to establish their own movement, they will start to fade and question themselves. So is, is Adesanya able to keep him at distance and control the timing, get his rhythm going, or is Whitaker able to upset Adesanya's rhythm and land some strikes on the outside and get a big shot? I think Adesanya wins a decision. Whitaker wins it by finish. But I have no idea what's going to happen, and both of those could be totally wrong. Well, you just have to tune in to pay-per-view this weekend. I'm so excited. It's going to be fight. crazy. This is actually a fight I'm looking forward to, and... Can't wait to talk about it next week because I will be back on camera to recap this one. Yes. But that does it for our show tonight. We do have a recap video. And we also have an episode of Charm City Beat where we discuss the Ravens. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm glad to be on camera with my bro here. Uh, take care. Have a good night. Huh? You alright over there? Yeah, I'm good.